Um, I worked at MIT Lincoln Laboratory. I was an engineer there, so I'm an engineer by trade. I majored in computer science, and I'm used to being the only female coder on a stage, so this is really very familiar for me. Um, so I have a, like an enormous amount of slides that I have to cram into five minutes, so I'm going to time myself starting now. All right, so this is my contact information if you want to, want to reach me after this. So I wanted to talk a little bit about computer science in the context of a liberal arts education, or basically why are we so bad at computer science, and I think that we could also apply this to math. I think that a lot of this country is not great at teaching math, and we're all here to be better at that. Um, so I think you all know that studying computer science leads to tangible results. Even our students know this. CS majors are the highest paid out of college. Uh, they're the happiest, second happiest employee <laughs> in the country. Um, professors are the first, which makes me the happiest. I am a computer science professor. Um, it has cachet. If you say that you work at one of these companies, people automatically assume you're a genius. People automatically assume I'm a genius all the time. I'm not a genius. Although, I'm feeling a room full of geniuses right now, so you guys probably recognize that I'm not that smart. Um, and there's not really another class where you can build a video game and actually get real learnings out of it. I feel like I built a lot of games in English and history, and it was like a fun diversion. But when I teach video games in computer science, the kids actually learn stuff, which is really, really great. Um, but despite this, no one takes it. There aren't enough computer science majors to fill demand. In 2020, there'll be um, four times as many jobs as there will be computer science majors. And uh, only 0.3% of high school girls express interest in computer science. Less than 4,000 take the computer science AP. Total, there are about 25,000 AP test takers, CSAP test takers, for like some uh, contrast information here. Uh, calculus is like upwards of 200,000 test takers, um, AP. Uh, uh, calculus. Um, so the numbers are worse for African American students and Latino students. It's basically an enormous problem. And the way that I like to teach computer science is I like to teach it from the abstract thinking perspective and the representation perspective rather than the coding perspective. So I'm just going to jump, why do I have a slide of this guy? You would know if I could do the whole talk. Um, <laughs> uh, but basically it's about stereotypes. But basically, on the first day of class in CSAP uh, class, we show our kids this. This is horrifying. We've already brought the smartest kids into the room. We've already alienated them enough. We've already told them this is super freaking hard. Now let's show them this, where like 90% of this doesn't apply to the lesson we're actually teaching. Totally ridiculous. Um, and I've just highlighted some things that they won't know for a few weeks, for a few years. And I have colleagues who still don't know what this is. <laughs> Um, so the way that I like to think about teaching computer science is that it's not programming. Um, just like history is not about citing primary sources, English is not about grammar, math is not about numbers. The thing that computer science and math have in common is that abstract thinking layer. And I think that the way that computer science and math can be brought together, and I'll say this having never taken pre-calculus. I, I failed math, literally failed in high school. I argued my way out of, of summer school. Um, <laughs> The beauty between them is like, I'm not a great mathematician, but I'm great at applying math. I somehow understand the concepts better when I can code them. I can't like solve for x very well, but I can get the computer to do it for me really well, and I know how to use it. So um, I like to give assignments that are more like, like traditionally we give assignments like this, like solve, make a palindrome solver, like, yeah, a palindrome is this. It's so boring for a high school girl especially. This is just the most boring assignment I've ever seen. Like, why, why aren't we giving assignments like this, which is like research a slot machine, figure out how it works, and implement it. And the beauty of that is you have the kids thinking about representing probability and doing statistical analysis and using what they've learned in math directly in a real world application. Isn't that what everyone hates about math? Like, when am I going to use this? Like, how many times have you heard that? Probably a million times. Now you're using it. So I'm not, I don't, there's a lot of different ways um, that David, yes, that David pointed out that you can show like these geometric concepts, like concepts of randomness in the program. But you can also just let math be, stand by itself, let computer science stand by itself, and let the magic just happen because of the connections that the kids are making in their brains. And that's sort of the approach that I take, looking at it really abstractly. Um, I don't like it when history teachers take Scratch and make kids tell stories in Scratch. I like that they're using Scratch, but like they're not thinking abstractly. They're using Scratch as a storytelling tool 
rather than an abstract thinking school tool. So basically, I'd like to tell you that it works and show the results. 99% uh, of girls who code students desire to make a career in technology by doing these sort of project-based, abstract kind of thinking pro um, projects. Uh, 95% of them say they want to major in computer science, and 87% of them passed out of a Stanford, Carnegie Mellon uh, final exam for CS 101. So it really works, and I'm very passionate about it, and they do better than the AP CS course, and I think that computer science and math can be a very happy marriage if we do it the right way. And that's it.